I was born in the Philippines. I studied in Manila from primary, elementary to college. And my school was well known for very good penmanship. And so it was a natural progression to be, in fact, manifesting it in calligraphic ways. And I was very good with forgery too. <laughs> so maybe that was the other side of the coin. It started me into thinking I had something special. In my culture, you don't question your parents. I never wavered. At a certain point, I think they realized we cannot fight with her. And so I was free to pursue what I wanted to do. And I ended up working for a couple of pharmaceutical companies that were American. It was very, very prescribed, no pun intended, but it gave me a lot of security. This is when I started considering graduate school. This friend of mine, heard about Cranbrook. And she said, Lucille, you have to apply to this school. And rejection letter. Maybe my portfolio is just not good enough. And I said, I'm gonna start a new life. And I remember the cover. It was a summer catalog from CCAC. Oh, okay, sounds good. I'll sign up. I would spend a lot of time in the library. I would read about the modernists, the digital, Russian constructivism. The more I tried to understand my work, looking at other inspiration, I realized it needs to have something else. I was really on a track at defining who I was. It was good timing that I land in San Francisco when California design was in its ascendancy. I started to do good work, and I was feeling more and more confident. I decided that I would visit my aunt in Michigan for Christmas. I bring my portfolio with me to Cranbrook, and I call Kathy McCoy, and she said, this is work you did for six months. This is amazing. We have an empty space. Cranbrook, now being where it is, its inspiration was much more the East Coast in Europe. So contemporary design and modern design was really the big deal. We would have these crits. I'd look at everybody's work and everybody was black and white. And then of course in San Francisco, most of my work was very much about pastel colors of California. It was a different kind of discipline. The synthesis of West Coast and East Coast gave me. I could easily absorb both. You know, I was new, and so being new, everything was novel. After that, I thought, where else do I go? And when they said, Lucille, you gotta go to New York. I said, okay, you know, young person, unattached. Carmen Kemp gave me a launching pad. It was a place for me where I grew creatively. The publicity surrounding the work, the awards that we got, it put my name on the map. How I ended up back in San Francisco was through the invitation of Michael Vanderbilt to go back and teach. He felt that what I was doing with my design work in terms of its typography would benefit CCAC. Teaching made me much more critical of my work in my own practice. The form is the easiest part for me because I can do that with my eyes closed. I'm always conscious that the conceptual is heavily paid attention to as well. I think the value of work that allows the viewer to complete it is that they have a role in getting the message. It isn't always important to provide the answers. It is equally important to leave things out. The sort of constant interaction of professional practice and teaching has been what's marked my creative life. I want to make sure that I am continually relevant to myself and relevant to the people I work with. So that when they look at me, they say, okay, you know, she's been designing for 30 years, but she's still really hip. You know, her thinking is still with it. That's how I like my work to be seen, that somehow it has a life beyond me.